All right, let's talk about plosions or those P-pops, the big booms you get from breaths of air into a microphone. Is there a way to solve the SM58 plosion issue? It seems to be extra sensitive to those big air booms. Plosions are P-pops when you're talking into a mic. Hey, hey, boom, boom. We can sort of deal with that by putting a high pass filter on the console and rolling off the low frequencies. But the side effect of that is that it reduces the amount of low end. There's a difference between not letting the low end get to where you don't want it to go and letting it get there and then reducing it and rolling it off. A good example is using a windscreen. A windscreen reduces wind noise or those plosion p-pop sounds but it doesn't roll off the low end. The frequency response is maintained but the issue is eliminated. Using a high pass filter, the frequency response is not maintained, but the issue is mitigated. So I was thinking, sure, I've got experience with tailoring low response. I could apply this to P-pops and plosions, and I thought, you know, four hour project should get me through it. As I started with resistive tape. This is acoustic tape. Uh, it's a kind of a fabric that allows you to, air goes through it, but not as easily. So if I, Pick this up, hello, hello. It deflects, it lets the sound through, but not the puff of air. It's almost like a high pass filter that applies to air blasts, but it doesn't necessarily affect the audible frequency response. So I figured, okay, well, I'll use some of this tape and by creative application of that, and then I have some of this acoustic foams that allow sound through, I figured I would be able to mitigate or reduce the issue. Now the SM58 has got soft foam cover over the diaphragm or the um, capsule here, the phase plug plastic. And then there's a little metal mesh perforated aluminum inside there covering the four back ports that let sound in the backside. I figured that maybe the plosions was a factor of this foam preventing the high pressure zone from happening and this perforated aluminum allowing the pressure to happen and the plosion was the difference between those two pressures. You hit some air and it was going in the back pushing the diaphragm upward and um, that's creating it. Little did I know. I learned two really interesting things. First of all, the SM58 looks fairly simple. It's got the foam over the phase plug, it's got the four slots, it's got the metal mesh, and how complex could it be? What I realized as I tried a multitude of different solutions, and I am 20 to 30 hours into this adventure, if not more, is that each of these factors are so finely tuned against each other, this thing is a work of art. Every single thing affects everything else, and it's a beautiful balance. And that brings number two. Did I actually think that in four hours I was gonna make an improvement to the most popular mic ever made and just throw some various foams and existing stuff in there and come up with a workable solution? On the other hand, I believe I have made some headway. P-pops. I need frequency response, that's pretty straightforward. We can see what's going on. But we also need to know handling noise just to see if there's anything way out of whack. All right, so what I've got is 858 here. Let's go ahead and look at the test setup and get these all matched. So I've got uh, a soundboard here that can make pink noise. Turn that on. And we can put each mic here and it will generate a curve. I've got smart going and we can record the output frequency response. I've got a subwoofer here. We can hear the P pops and you should be able to see the speaker. We turn on the pink noise and we can see on smart what we have for a curve. I can save that and we'll go through the mics and make sure that they're all similar.
So there's our uh, frequency responses of the various mics. We have some variations in the high end. For the most part, everything's fairly close. We know that when you grab a mic out of the box, they're gonna vary by something like this. Our change of P-pops or whatever we're gonna do has to be more drastic than the baseline variations. The next thing I'm gonna do is look at the backside of the mics and we'll do the polar response reference. We have our reference points. We can see our on-axis response. And since these are cardioid mics, I'm doing 180 degrees off-axis. I lined the little line of the grill up with the edge of the foam. And we have our off-axis response variations. And now we need the plosion sound. And this was the biggest challenge I faced with solving the problem is I needed a way to create the problem. For that, what I'm going to do is P-Pop Creator, and that is this assault gun. And this is a fly shooting weapon that uh, you put salt in this chamber here, close it up, and it shoots a puff of air or salt, if there's salt in there, out the front. This is my best um, tool for creating a powerful P-Pop of the most drastic level. So now what I'm going to do is modify these microphones in various ways, and then we'll go back and take a look at them. I'm gonna average these first eight curves together and end up with a single curve. So this is the average of the eight microphones with their grills on. Next, we're gonna average the backside, the rear pickup of the microphone to figure out the polar. And then finally, we're gonna average the microphones without the grills. And we have our three averages here. Um, since the with grill and without grill are so similar, I'm gonna average those together. All right, so now we have a front average in the red and in the gold we have a rear average. What I've done is modified in different ways a bunch of these mics. In order to not be biased, I label them with blank labels. I don't know which one is which and I'm gonna letter them. And then we'll test them all. We'll pick out the ones we like and then we'll reveal and see how they work and how well. So we'll start with A. All right, save that. And then we'll make sure that these fall in line with it. And look at that. Each of these curves is right on top of the other ones in the low frequencies. The highs are kind of different, but um, I have pretty good confidence that that's our A curve. Okay, let's go B. And look, A is better than B. This is a good sign. Let's try C. This is kind of exciting, seeing that discrepancy there, and the high frequency responses are fairly similar. Oh, I'm feeling pretty good about this. So let's do E. Let's try G. One of the challenges with this test is finding a way to P-pop these things in a consistent and repeatable level. Let's go ahead and weed out the weak ones. The C curve is the worst. So let's go ahead and look at the C mic and see what that looks like inside. Oh, and it is a modified mic. So what this has is a resistive tape wrap and a foam top on it. I thought maybe having kind of a, a, ch a chamber around it, having it wrapped and foam would get the air to enter more evenly. This wrap forms like a little low end box around the microphone and makes it uneven. The low end coming in the front versus the back is different and therefore the diaphragm's moving, I'm guessing is what's happening. And this is a fail. Let's see what this one here is. This is kind of the gray one and that's G. All right, G we'll consider uh, as our next worst mic. Let's see if it's modified or not. What I've done here, I cut up one of the muffs. These things that are microphone muffs that have all the hair on them and I put that inside to try and minimize the amount of peat blast. When you blow on it, those things move. And I was thinking maybe if they work the same as they do on a windscreen, 
maybe they would help with this. Uh, what I'm guessing is they need to move more and there's not enough room in there for them to move or it's just not enough. Okay, so the muff, internal muff did not work and we will eliminate G. Next, we've got the brown one, which is D. And this is not a modified mic. There's some hairs in here from me messing with it, but um, this is an unmodified mic. We have a reference point of D as to what we are trying to beat. I'm guessing that blue here, B, is probably another unmodified mic. No, it is modified. Now here, I took a piece of this foam and I cut some of the muff and I built a little hat, round hawk there, to um, see if that would help. Clearly it does not. Next is the orange, which is F. Let's see what's in F. F is another one that has a different amount of this um, muff stuff in here. I took and chopped it all up and made it more fluffy. Now we're getting into the ones that actually look like they're doing something. Let's try E, which is this curve here. All right, so this is kind of neat. What I did here, oh, it's moved a little bit, is I took a little piece of that foam and I put it in the center and then I took a little um, grill cover from an Audix mic. This is like a nylon mesh strewn across a plastic ring. And the thought there was Audix mics seem to be less P-pop prone than 58. So maybe using what Audix is doing. And then I put a little dot in the middle there just to kind of maybe diffuse or deflect the P-pop as it comes in. Um, let's go to the next one, which is red. Now this is the A mic. Oh, so this one, I did the same thing. I took the plastic disc, I put the little piece of foam there and I put another plastic disc on top and then I supported it with some medical tape in four locations. And the concept here was kind of like a silencer. I had read a long time ago that you could make a silencer with bottle caps for a gun and that the way that silencers work is a series of chambers that release the pressure incrementally instead of all at once. And so by stacking these two nylon meshes on top, I was thinking I could start the beginning of a silencer. I couldn't go three high because there's not enough room in there. And also kind of based on the recording concept where you have nylon around a coat hanger and it stops a P-pop. So making a little version of that. That's um, probably the coolest of the mods and the one I was hoping would work. And then finally, H. Now H, if we look at it, it's down in the lows, but it's also down in the highs. Look how much lower it is in the high frequencies than the red one. So theoretically, we could just turn it down and we'd be right where we are. This one's got fabric tape around the back port, which chokes off some of the low end. Also kind of messes with the polar pattern. And I've got a bunch of this um, muff in here. So this one here is just a, a, a lot of crap in the way and behind. This is not a very exciting mod. It probably does not sound optimum. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the curves and pick some mics to listen to. Of our curves, let's take this top curve here, which I believe is C, and we'll get rid of that. That was the chambering mic. We don't like it. This other one that's got um, more low end than what we even started with. Let's get rid of that, which was G. I think D is our reference mic, and we'll keep that in there. Uh, next, we've got this blue one. It's too close to D. Let's get rid of it. That's B. And that was the one that had the little spiky hairdo. And we can see that this gray one is low and low everywhere. So let's get rid of H. All right, so now we're down to four microphones, four responses. The orange one is looking a little iffy on the top end. So that's our least favorite. And it's a little higher on the low end. So let's get rid of that. And we're left with D, E, and A, the D, E, A. Probably not somebody we want to be hanging out with. Let's see what these things sound like. And then I'm going to take both mics. I'm going to put them here. Turn on the reference mic. And then we're going to go ahead and try the other mic. And we see a little difference in the high end here. Um, I could EQ that in. I'm going to leave it out. All right, so we have mics that look 
very similar on the analyzer. Let's go ahead and mute the paint noise. All right, so I'm gonna talk into both at once. That way I won't be biased towards one or the other. And then we can listen to one and then the other in the video recording. I'll switch back and forth between them. So let's get them here. I've got the sub on. So we'll get them lined up just right. And I will talk about plenty of people partying at the pool with pythons and platypuses pooping in piles of polenta and uh, this kind of pee poppy pop poop pup stuff and lots of puppies popping around populace of Pluto. And I will talk about plenty of people partying at the pool with pythons and platypuses pooping in piles of polenta and uh, this kind of pee poppy pup poop pup stuff and lots of puppies popping around the populace of Pluto. All right, so there we go. There's some um, pee pops and we can listen to the sound of my voice and I am talking into the D mic, which is the reference, and I will switch to talking into the A mic, which is the modified version with the double stack. Now I'll turn the sub off and... All right, this is with the sub off. I'm talking into both mics and I do not have headphones on. I don't know what this is sounding like. And I'll lean over into the one mic here on the right side, my right, your left, and to the other mic. And we're talking into both about plenty of people partying at the pool with polenta and platypuses and pythons with with people piling around with popo pies and popcorn. Okay. And all right, there we go. And there we have the subwoofer partying along with us and the big P pops. And here we've got the subwoofer partying along with us and the P pops. P popping parties over here. P popping parties over here. And we get a little bit of feedback, so I'm going to turn it down just a hair. And uh, can you see a difference there? I can see a difference. Yeah. I can't make it move as far. All right, so I think we've made some headway. Whether or not this is relevant enough to do the mod, I don't know. Here's the non-modified version. It's got some fuzz on it. And that's your stock 58. And this one here has got the two discs and the foam in between is a spacer. The discs come from this Audix OM7 capsule. I have a bunch of these laying around, so it comes in handy for stuff like this and other projects. Here we've got that over the diaphragm as a diffuser or a windscreen. You know, making this probably some stretched nylon over something. I mean, you could probably mess with this. The key to this, I believe, is the ventilation. So you want to have some resistance to the P-pop with a screen mesh, then ventilation so that the pressure can be dissipated outward and away from the diaphragm. And then I've got another uh, grill mesh there that again, lets anything that gets through dissipate outward and away. It's something you're definitely gonna have to try in real world. I don't have, um, I have not tried it in um, shows and you know maybe if you can experiment let me know how it goes let me know if you build something similar and uh, maybe this gets you in the right path or you come up with a better solution all right well that's enough of this for me and i'm going to move on to other projects and thank you for joining my channel and hanging out and i hope you find my dives into curiosity interesting and fun